What's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one I'm going to be previewing all of the Daily Ops Rare Rewards that we can currently get in the game. I'm going to be jam packing every single one of them in this one video. These are all of the Rare Rewards that we can get currently. I don't know if Bethesda has plans in the future to add more Rare Rewards in the loot table. Now keep in mind I'm not going to be going over like the typical rewards that you get such as like you know legendaries, caps, experience, grip, and you know, all of that mumbo jumbo. I'm not going to be going over that. I'm going to be going over the rare specific rewards that you can only get from the daily ops. Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes I can be pretty bad at explaining things. But yeah, I guess to get this started, let me go over all of the camp things that you can get from doing the daily ops. In case you don't know, you can be rewarded the scavenge solar panel plan, the symptomatic plan, the super reactor plan, the caged bulb lights plan, the burrows signs plan, the Valley Galleria Science Plan, and lastly, the Vault 94 Stash Box Plan. And I have learned all of those, and within this build here, you're going to be seeing all of them previewed and used in some kind of way. Hopefully, this build can help inspire you with something that you could do with your build or something. But yeah, I guess to start it off here, here is the solar panel in action. This will be located underneath generators. As you can see, it will take one ceramic, two copper, one rubber, and two steel to craft. And it contains a power of five to electricity. So, yeah, pretty convenient. And to top it off, it looks nice as well. Moving on, let me go ahead and show you now the caged bulb lights in action. As you can see here, they are previewed. There are two different lengths that you can get. As you can see, there is a short length here and a long length. They're not perfectly set up either, and that's what I like about them. Gives them that survival wasteland, you know, look. Here's the two different themes, by the way. And they're really, really easy to make. Just requires glass and plastic. But yeah, they also fit nicely with the log cabin. You can place them right underneath the roofing. Simple, but really nice touch. Anyways, next up here, I'm going to go over the signs. You can see one in the background of these machines. And this is part of the Valley Galleria signs. As you can see, it is labeled Boutique Sign. And let me go ahead and show you all where they are located. They're underneath wall decor, and they are located right here within the category. But yeah, you got quite a bit to choose from. I'll be showing you all of them displayed here in a second. Just giving you a brief preview of all of them in action right now. You'll see them displayed along this log cabin. You'll also see burrow signs um, displayed as well, such as this mess hall right here above this checkout area. And as you can see down here is also a burrow sign. Let me go and pull those up real quick. There's one right there as well, speaking of burrow signs. They're also located in the wall decor, at the very bottom of the wall decor here. This one is really, really neat. Let me go ahead and show you all this real quick. I will be honest, it can have a bit of a problem placing sometimes, like, sometimes it can be kind of floating. But yeah, typically this is lit up, but right now I don't have power connected to that area, but over here I do. Unfortunately, this sign, though, glitched into the log cabin, and now I can't get it out. Yeah, that was a bummer that that happened, but check that out. The text here does light up. That's so cool for a sign. But anyways, go ahead and show you the others that you can get too. Got that one. There's also Central, Market, Mess Hall, and Pier. That's all the borough signs. Let me go ahead and give you a quick tour inside the log cabin here. You'll see some of them used around, such as right there. And yeah, that's a Valley Galleria sign. So is that, so is that. But still, you know, you get the point. You see one right there. Looking out from the area that you could do a transaction at. Maybe give them their food or whatever they're purchasing from here. Or maybe they want to come in and dine in. It's their choice. Take you around. As you can see, they're displayed all over the log cabin here. Really nice. I dig them. Quite a lot. I like how they can also be displayed on you know, the defense railings too. They add a nice touch to them. 
But yeah, now let's go ahead and move on inside this place here. I built, I don't know, kind of like a large garage, if you will. Inside this place is the super reactor. This is also acquired from the Daily Ops. As you can see, it looks sweet. Especially if you can get it to flow right inside your building. The setup I did here is I placed it down first and then I placed my foundations to be right at the edge of the super reactor. Really dig the way it came out. As you see the cage bulb lights are in action as well up top. I really like the mood they set. Love the lighting to them. They give off the exact same lighting as the oil lamps. And the oil lamps, oh my gosh, they look so nice. But yeah, I guess let's go ahead and get into more about this super reactor. As you can see, first off, it does produce 100 electricity. So this isn't any different from a fusion generator. Let me go ahead and just pull that up here for some proof. As you can see, fusion generator also provides 100 power. So yeah. They're the same in that aspect. They're a little different though. Actually, no, they're not. It takes the exact same things as a fusion generator takes as well to make. So, yeah, pretty much the same thing, except obviously the super reactor is going to take up more room. So it may take a bit more planning out when adding a super reactor rather than just simply plopping down a fusion generator. I wanted to show the daily ops camp items in action so that way it could possibly give other players some inspiration on what they could possibly do for their camp with, you know, the Daily Ops camp items. Anyway, speaking of that, here is the next one. This one is also extremely unique. I mean, yeah, the Super Reactor is extremely unique. I love also the lighting that it gives off. Love it. Looks really nice. But this right here is also extremely unique. This is called the Symptomatic. This will be located underneath miscellaneous structures, and it will be located near the bottom here, right above the porta potty you can see it's going to take two aluminum one circuitry one fiber optics one gear one glass one screw and two steel it's not that expensive and keep in mind i do have contractor on which is a perk card that you can invest in if you want if you haven't uh, it's located in the intelligence category as you can see it'll make crafting workshop items now cost 50 percent fewer materials very handy but yeah the symptomatic is definitely not just for looks what it does is it heals all of your diseases that you may have extremely beneficial to have in your camp. So it's not only just for looks, it's actually beneficial. I now don't have to travel over to the White Springs and drink, you know, the water fountain as much. I can just get in my symptomatic and cure my diseases whenever I stop by my camp or whatever. Very handy. Anyways, lastly here, I have for you the Vault 94 stash box. Some of you may remember, you know, looting this back when the Vault 94 raid was still available, but it currently isn't anymore. However, I do know Bethesda does have plans to eventually get the raids back active. But yeah, we now officially can get the stash box from that raid from just doing the daily ops. It's a random rare reward that we can acquire. But yeah, I believe that is all the camp items that we can currently get from the daily ops. Yeah, that about covers everything. You know what, now, why don't I just get into the outfit that you can acquire from the daily ops since it's right in front of us i have my ally actually rocking it as you can see i'll go ahead and click on customize here it's called the brotherhood special ops outfit as you can see you can get the suit and mask here's what they both look like if my ally would uh stop making out with this railing all right um can we move it along this way oh for pete's sake Aha! there you go work it Work it, girl. All right. As you see, here's what it looks like, guys, in action. I say it looks really solid. I've seen some pretty high-end trades going on, too, for this outfit. Because it can be pretty tricky to acquire. You know, a lot of people do get the same rewards over and over and over, and they just don't feel like grinding it as much. If you do have multiple characters, however, it can be pretty easier to acquire because your odds are better. I personally think this is the best Brotherhood outfit in the game at the moment. You can see the shoddy shells on the belt down there. You know, the Brotherhood logo on the shoulder. It looks 
really nice. But, uh, yeah, so that's the outfit. The Brotherhood's Special Ops Mask and Suit. The other outfit that you can get from the Daily Ops is the Vault 94 Jumpsuit. However, the difference is you get a plan for the Vault 94 Jumpsuit, so you can just craft it. Um, as for the Special Ops Mask and Suit, you're going to have to acquire those individually by completing the Daily Ops. Currently, there's no plan for this outfit that you see right in front of me. Yeah. So technically, the Brotherhood Special Ops outfit is more rare than the Vault 94 jumpsuit. But uh, I'll go ahead and show you all real quick what it looks like and what it takes to craft it. Armor's workbench is right here. So it will be an Under Armour. And as you can see, you can craft the Vault 94 jumpsuit for just one circuitry, six cloth, and one gold. Go ahead and display that real quick on my character so you can get a taste of what it looks like in action. Here's what it looks like. It looks like your typical vault jumpsuit, except on the back it has, of course, 94. Anyways, moving on. You can also get the recipe called Liquid Courage, which is something else that I definitely wanted to cover. Once you learn the recipe, you'll be able to officially craft it from a brewing station. As you can see, if you just go under spirits here, I have fermentable liquid courage. And it's going to require three boiled water, three corn, two razor grain, a Wendigo Colossus vocal sack, the most tricky ingredient to get to craft this, and lastly, five wood. So, pretty simple. The only difficult part really is collecting the vocal sacks. But yeah, once you make it, you'll then have to put it in a fermenter and just wait out until it's ready. I made quite a few just for my squad as well, going up against Earl Williams. So as you can see, Liquid Courage will increase your strength and luck, and it'll also make it so you'll become immune to fear attacks from Earl Williams, or just in general, any other fear attacks that may come into the game. This beverage is very, very handy against the boss fight at Monongah Mine, especially if everyone going down there drinks this before the fight, because this will make it so no one is going to be affected by Earl Williams' screech. As most of you know, that'll typically make you run away in fear, which slows down your damage toward the boss tremendously. You'll see how much of a difference this does make when you go to fight him after taking this drink. I'm telling y'all, it's definitely worth it to get from the Daily Ops. But uh, yeah, that's it for the Liquid Courage that you can get from the Daily Ops. Now let's go ahead and go over the weapons that we can get. Starting off with the Gutter. Now keep in mind, all of these weapons that we can get will start off as plans. You know, I'm not talking about the typical legendary rewards that we can get from completing Daily Ops. I'm talking about the rare weapon reward plans that we can get. And the first one I'll be starting off with here is the gutter. Let me go ahead and show you what it takes first off to craft one of these. As you can see, here's what it looks like. Pretty sweet looking sword. And it's going to require seven aluminum, one assault tron circuit board, which is the hardest thing to get to craft this in my opinion, just because it can be pretty pricey. Also, it's going to require 10 gears, two legendary modules, seven oil, nine plastic, 11 screws, and 18 steel. Real quick though, I don't have the legendary modules, so, I'm gonna have to go get those. But yeah, in order to get the legendary modules, you have to head on over here at the Rusty Pick. Uh, this is where the purveyor is currently located at. I don't know if Bethesda has plans to move the purveyor again, but hey, at the moment, this is where you can get the legendary modules. As you can see, you could buy 10 of them for 500 script, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, since I'm maxed out on script here, might as well. So now let's go ahead and craft some gutters. I'm gonna go ahead and head back to my camp real quick. Which, by the way, this is where my camp is located at, in case you may want to build at this location that I'm at, right below Vault 96. It's a pretty nice location overall. All right, so I'm back at my camp. Let me go ahead and head on over to my weapons workbench and craft the gutter. I just realized I have to have makeshift warrior five, too. Bam, got that, cool. Okay, there's the gutter. Go ahead and craft a level 45 variant. You know, actually, I'll craft one more. Why not? I got enough. So, I just made two gutters, and here's what I got. As you see, they both come with the same thing. It'll give you superior damage, and also you'll gain brief health regeneration when you hit an enemy. So, it's vampires as well. And, yeah. 
same thing once again they are set in stone effects when you craft this weapon and it is also noted in the wiki that the gutter's base damage is actually 20 percent higher than a standard assault blade as you see that is what this is except you know of course it has the gutter paint on it and it comes with the vampire's damage with superior damage and a little bit more than what you would typically get from a regular old assault blade overall not a weapon i would typically run around with but i mean it looks pretty sweet. Also keep in mind the damage that you're seeing earlier while I was displaying the gutter can be brought way higher. Uh, the build that I'm currently rocking is a rifle build. It has nothing to do with melee perk cards. But yeah, moving on to the next one. We have the Whistle in the Dark. Now this is an unusual weapon. I'm unsure why Bethesda even decided to add this in the game. But hey, I may play around with it for like a challenge or something in the future. As you can see though, I'm going to have to have Gunsmith rank 4 unfortunately, but I do have everything that it does require. And we could look at the perks at the top already. Damage increases with the night and decreases with the day, so it has nocturnal effect on it. What the heck, Bethesda. Also, it has plus 33% VATS hit chance and plus 1 perception. It also is an assault rifle, so keep that in mind when you are using this. I know there is like a nice Halloween assault rifle uh, skin out there. That actually would look good on this. And makes sense with the name, Whistle in the Dark. The skin has a bunch of bats on it. But yeah, um, overall the perks are not my forte, but they may be for someone else that's rocking like a sneak build and likes to go out at night to fight enemies. As you see, we have 109 damage output with this currently. And here's a little taste of it in action at night. So, yeah, overall, potentially, it can be a pretty solid weapon. Just Nocturnal, once again, isn't really my play style. But who knows? There may be someone out there that would enjoy this with a VAT sneak build. The effects on this weapon are set in stone, just like the gutters are. But, yeah, this next weapon that we can get from the Daily Ops, however, isn't. If you manage to get your hands on the Warglaive plan, it'll officially be a part of your loot table, such as, like, if you learn the Fixer plan or the Bayarm plan. Once you learn the Warglaive plan, you'll have a potential chance of getting it as a legendary from the purveyor or from completing a random event that rewards you legendaries typically, like the daily ops. However, the downfall is you can't just craft a legendary variant. You're going to have to literally find it. It's officially a part of your RNG loot table. It's not going to be like crafting the whistle in the dark or the gutter, you know, how they have like set in stone effects. The Warglaive is completely different. Once you learn the plan, once again, it'll be a part of your loot table now. So you'll officially be able to potentially find it from the purveyor or from completing the daily ops or something. I'm hoping to get my hands honestly on a bloody faster swing speed. I want to see the true potential of this weapon. It is an extremely powerful two-handed weapon. I think it is the best two-handed weapon out there at the moment. Not only because of its power, but mainly because of its awesome modifications you can get on it as well. They are beneficial. However, the modifications are going to require gold bullion. They'll be sold from Regs, the Secret Service agent, at Vault 79. I went into full detail about this weapon in another video. I'll have a link in the description to that video if you are interested in it. For now, I'm just touching base over the weapon and let you all know that there are modifications for it and that this is a rare reward from the Daily Ops. It's an extremely rare reward. So good luck getting your hands on this on the right character that you're wanting to. Like, I want this on my melee build character, but the odds of it getting on my melee build character is pretty low, but I'll get it eventually. Actually, on that note, keep in mind you can't trade any of these weapons either. Like, none of these weapons are tradable. Like, you can get them and all, but you can't trade them or drop them to your friends. I feel like that's pretty important to know. But yeah, I guess I'll start wrapping up this comprehensive review over the Daily Ops Rare Rewards. Hopefully you found this enjoyable as well as informative at the same time. I'm out of here, everybody. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, remember to try to stay safe out there during these unusual times. Peace.